So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special journals by Dave Marshall. Chart of accounts The neglected red-headed stepchild. Why would I say this? In my opinion, this topic like the red-headed stepchild, is not given the attention and respect it deserves. Many of the textbooks and courses that I've looked at gloss over the chart of accounts by giving a definition and throwing in a simple example. What is the chart of accounts? The chart of accounts is a listing of all the individual accounts in the general ledger that contains the account's name, a brief description of the account, and optional other identifiers, codes, or a coded account number assigned to aid in recording, classifying, summarizing, and reporting transactions. Your accounting system is built around this skeleton list of account names called the chart of accounts and is organized by the types of major accounts. The accounts you set up are tailored for your particular type of business. What's an account? An account is a separate record for each type of asset, liability, equity, revenue, and expense used to show the beginning balance and to record the increases and decreases using debits and credits for a period of time and the resulting ending balance at the end of the period. All the individual accounts make up or become a part of the chart of accounts. What are the major type of accounts? If you don't already know, the major types of accounts are, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, expenses, and draws, dividends. How are they organized? The chart of accounts is typically organized and listed in a special order. Balance sheet accounts are listed first followed by the income statement accounts. Note, this USA order may vary depending on your country. So you know, your chart of accounts can be as simple or complex as you need to provide the financial information you need to manage a business. The General Ledger is a book containing the accounts and balances for all of a business's assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expense accounts. You can think of the General Ledger as a file cabinet that contains a record folder for each of your accounts. Each account contains the following information account name, account number, optional, date records the date of the posting, description is used to optionally provide additional information about the amounts posted, posting reference, post ref, to identify what special journal the amount was posted from, debit amount, credit amount, and the account balance which is the current balance of the account after updating the debit and credit amounts posted to the account. Source documents are the original sources of information that provide documentation, proof, that a transaction has occurred such as sales invoices, tickets, invoices from suppliers, contracts, checks written and checks received, promissory notes, and various other types of business documents. These documents provide us with the information needed to record our financial transactions in our bookkeeping records. If you recall a transaction is any event or condition that must be recorded in the books of a business because of its effect on the financial condition of the business, such as buying and selling a business deal or agreement. Transaction analysis Before you record any transaction in any journal, you need to analyze the transaction and first determine if it affects the financial activities of the business. If it does, you then must determine what accounts are affected and then what journal needs to be used to record the transaction. An example of a couple of business activities that many businesses track that are not initially recorded in the journals are purchase orders and sales orders. They are formally entered in the journals when the actual sale takes place or the business receives and is invoiced for the products that were ordered. Transaction analysis is really a simple task that with experience a bookkeeper performs without even thinking about it. Let's break it down into seven simple steps. 1. Recognize that a transaction event has occurred and what source documents such as sales invoices, tickets, invoices from suppliers, contracts, checks written or checks received, provide documentation, proof, that a transaction has occurred. 2. Understand how the transaction event affects the business and whether it needs to be recorded in the formal bookkeeping records. 3. Determine what accounts are affected and whether the transaction increases or decreases the account balance. 4. Use the business's chart of accounts to determine the account numbers that represent these accounts. 5. Use the debit and credit rules to determine if the accounts are debited or credited. 6. Determine what journal should be used to record the transaction. 7. Do it record the transaction.
The double entry system is the standard system used by businesses and other organizations to record financial transactions. Since all business transactions consist of an exchange of one thing for another, double entry bookkeeping using debits and credits is used to show this twofold effect. Debits and credits are the device that provide the ability to record the entries twice and are explained in more detail later in this tutorial. The double entry system also has built-in checks and balances. Due to the use of debits and credits, the double entry system is self-balancing. The total of the debit values recorded must equal the total of the credit values recorded. This system, when used along with the accrual method of accounting, is a complete accounting system and focuses on the income statement and balance sheet. This system has worldwide support as the system to use by businesses for recording their financial transactions. It got its name because each transaction is recorded in at least two places, accounts, using debits and credits. Accounting equations. Your chef, namely me, is about to divulge a secret recipe. I know you've been waiting to get the colonel's secret recipe for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Sorry to disappoint you, but this recipe is actually a simple equation and lays the foundation on which double-entry bookkeeping is built. This equation is called the accounting equation and is also referred to as the balance sheet equation. The equation may be expressed in three forms, 1. Abbreviated or simple version, property equals property rights 2. Expanded version, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, capital 3. Fully expanded version, assets equals liabilities plus beginning owner's equity, capital plus additional owner investments plus revenues minus expenses minus draws. As mentioned earlier, the double entry is a type of accounting, bookkeeping system that requires every transaction to be recorded in at least two places, accounts, using debits and credits to represent increases and decreases. Well this equation is what double entry is all about. We make two entries for every business transaction. These entries represent increases or decreases in property, assets, and or property rights, liabilities and owner's equity. In other words the double entry system based on the accounting equation allows us to track, 1, what we got and what went, property, assets the, good stuff, and 2, from whom and to whom, property rights, claims to the assets, good stuff, who has a right or claim to the business's property, claims to the property, assets, arise from two sources, creditors and owners. Debits credits since we will be using debits and credits to record transactions in special journals and general ledger accounts, let's revisit some old definitions. Debit an entry in the financial books of a firm that increases an asset, draw or an expense or an entry that decreases a liability, owner's equity, capital or income. Also, an entry entered on the left side, column, of a journal or general ledger account. Let's combine the two above definitions into one complete definition. An entry, amount, entered on the left side, column, of a journal or general ledger account that increases an asset, draw or an expense or an entry that decreases a liability, owner's equity, capital, or revenue. Credit, an entry in the financial books of a firm that increases a liability, owner's equity, capital, or revenue, or an entry that decreases an asset, draw, or an expense. Also, an entry entered on the right side, column, of a journal or general ledger account. Let's combine the two above definitions into one complete definition. An entry, amount, entered on the right side, column, of a journal or general ledger account that increases a liability, owner's equity, capital, or revenue, or an entry that decreases an asset, draw, or an expense. A journal is an accounting record that is used to record the different types of transactions using various source documents. Journals are often called or referred to as the books of original entry. The reason is that this is the first place that business transactions are formally recorded. Specialized journals are journals used to initially record special types of transactions such as sales, cash disbursements, and cash receipts in their own journal. All these journals are designed to record special types of business transactions and post the totals accumulated in these journals to the general ledger periodically, usually once a month. You can think of a journal as a financial diary. The general journal is used to record unusual or infrequent types of transactions. Type of entries normally made in the general journal are depreciation entries, correcting entries, and adjusting and closing entries. 
The Cash Disbursements Journal is a special journal that is used to record all cash that is paid out by a business except for payroll. The Cash Receipts Journal is a special journal that is used to record all receipts of cash. The Sales Journal is a special journal where sales of services and merchandise made on account, businesses customer is allowed to charge purchases, are recorded. The Purchases Journal is a special journal that is used to record all purchases and various expenses and other charges from suppliers that a business has an open account with. Supplier allows the business to charge purchases. The Payroll Journal is a special journal that is used to record and summarize salaries and wages paid to employees and the deductions for taxes and other authorized employee withholding amounts. This introductory tutorial does not cover the payroll accounting process and records. The Sales Return and Allowances Journal is a special journal that is used to record the returns and allowances of merchandise sold on account. The Purchase Returns and Allowances Journal is a special journal that is used to record the returns and allowances of merchandise purchased on account. Why use special journals? 1. Groups and records transactions of a like nature. A familiar example is recording all cash received by a business in one place. 2. Saves time with summary and less frequent postings to the general ledger. 3. Allows a business to have different individuals responsible for different journals thereby increasing internal controls and allocating the record-keeping workload. So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special Journals. Lesson 1. By Dave Marshall. Special Journals Revisited. Special Journals were briefly discussed in the introduction to this tutorial. In this lesson, we're going learn more about what they are and how they're used. Special Journals are nothing more than journals designed and used for recording a single type of transaction such as receiving cash or writing checks. What makes them special? Simply that they only record certain types of transactions. How do I know which special journal to use? It's easy. The definition of the special journal tells you exactly what type of transaction should be recorded in what journal. Let's use an easy illustration that we are all familiar with, a kitchen drawer, to make my point clear. In the drawer is one of those fancy plastic dividers that is used to store your eating utensils. Your rules and definitions for storing your eating utensils are, bin 1 knives. Bin 2 forks. Bin 3 spoons. After washing and drying your eating utensils you pick up a spoon. Based on your rules and definitions what bin are you going to put it in? I know I'm insulting your intelligence. Of course it goes in bin 3. It's not any different than how you determine what special journal to use when you record a transaction. The definition and rules of the special journal tell you in what journal the transaction should be recorded in. If you recall, the steps for analyzing and recording a transaction are, 1. Recognize that a transaction, event, has occurred and what source documents such as sales invoices, tickets, invoices from suppliers, contracts, checks written or checks received, provide documentation, proof, that a transaction has occurred. 2. Understand how the transaction, event, affects the business the type of transaction and whether it needs to be recorded in the formal bookkeeping records. 3. Determine what accounts are affected and whether the transaction increases or decreases the account balance. 4. Use the business's chart of accounts when necessary to determine the account numbers that represent these accounts. 5. Use the debit and credit rules to determine if the accounts are debited or credited. 6. Determine what journal should be used to record the transaction. 7. Do it record the transaction. Let's look at step 6 determine what journal should be used to record the transaction. How do we do this? All we have to do, based on our definitions, is determine what bin, special journal, to put our knives, forks, and spoons, type of transaction, in. First let's review the definitions for the special journals. The cash receipts journal is a special journal that is used to record all receipts of cash. The Sales Journal is a special journal where sales of services and merchandise made on account, businesses customer is allowed to charge purchases, are recorded. The Cash Disbursements Journal is a special journal that is used to record all cash that is paid out by a business except for payroll. 
The Purchases Journal is a special journal that is used to record all purchases and various expenses and other charges from suppliers that a business has an open account with. Supplier allows the business to charge purchases. Dot. The Sales Return and Allowances Journal is a special journal that is used to record the returns and allowances of merchandise sold on account. The Purchase Returns and Allowances Journal is a special journal that is used to record the returns and allowances of merchandise purchased on account. The Payroll Journal is a special journal that is used to record and summarize salaries and wages paid to employees and the deductions for taxes and other authorized employee withholding amounts not discussed in this tutorial. The General Journal is the record used to record unusual or infrequent types of transactions. Type of entries normally made in the general journal are depreciation entries, correcting entries, and adjusting and closing entries. C. It's really quite easy to determine what journal to use to record business transactions. A little common sense goes a long way. Remember it's your business and you could if you had a special need design your own special journal. General ledger control accounts and subsidiary ledgers. Hopefully by now you know, the general ledger is a special record where each account that we want to track and keep up with has a separate page or pages. This book record is organized into major sections just like the accounting equation that we studied in my introductory course. Do you have any idea what these sections might be? Come on this question is not that hard. The general ledger's major sections are assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenues, expenses, and draws. Simply stated a general ledger is just a book containing the summarized financial transactions and balances of the accounts for all of a business's assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expense accounts. How the pieces fit together. In addition to special journals and regular general ledger accounts we also use some additional supporting records. Special General Ledger Accounts Control Accounts A Control Account is a general ledger account that provides a summarized balance of the detailed balances of the individual records maintained in a subsidiary ledger. Special General Ledger Accounts Control Accounts A control account is a general ledger account that provides a summarized balance of the detailed balances of the individual records maintained in a subsidiary ledger. General Ledger Control Accounts only provide us with total amounts. The accounts receivable control account provides us with the total amount that customers owe us. The general ledger accounts payable control account only provides us with the total amount that we owe to suppliers. Subsidiary ledgers. A subsidiary ledger is a group of similar accounts whose combined balances equal the balance in a specific general ledger account. The general ledger account that summarizes a subsidiary ledger's account balances is called a control account. The subsidiary ledger's purpose is to provide detail information about transactions that are summarized in a general ledger control account. Without subsidiary ledgers it would be difficult without doing a time-consuming analysis to provide answers to some of the following types of questions. How much does a BC company owe us and are any invoices past due? Every customer that owes us money and how much? What type of specific equipment and vehicles do we own and how much have we depreciated them? How much do we owe XYZ supplier and are we late with any payments? Every supplier we owe and how much? What loans do we have? How much do we still owe on them? And with whom do we have them? If we maintain an inventory of products in our business, how many of XXX product do we have on hand and what is its cost and selling price? How much have we paid Joe Blow this year? Can your business easily provide the answers to the above questions? After posting all transactions to the control accounts and subsidiary ledgers, the balance of the control accounts and the sum of the detailed records in the subsidiary ledgers should always be the same. In other words, a control account deals with summarized information while a subsidiary ledger deals with detailed information. What journal do I use? Want to make determining what journal to use even easier? I knew you'd say yes and make me work harder. The following table and chart help you to select the, the proper journal by answering some simple questions. They say a picture's worth a thousand words so I've provided two visual aids to aid in determining what special journal to use. What journal do I use? What journal do I use?
All the special journals summarize the daily business transactions and feed, post, their summarized information to the appropriate accounts in the general ledger. All repetitive types of transactions are normally grouped together and recorded in their appropriate special journal, namely cash receipts, cash disbursements, payroll, purchases, sales, etc. In many beginning accounting and bookkeeping courses, the general journal is used as a tool to demonstrate what a journal is and what purpose it serves. Also, each individual entry in the general journal is posted to the general ledger. In that real, business world mostly summarized total amounts are actually posted to the general ledger from the journals. Back to that, oh, saying that a picture's worth a thousand words. The following posting process diagram illustrates how simple the actual bookkeeping process is. The posting process is nothing complicated. You start with a source document that is the basis for a transaction, record the transaction in the appropriate special journal, post the amounts from the special journals to the general ledger control and regular accounts and update the general ledger subsidiary ledgers. The subsidiary ledgers contains the detail information that supports the balance in the control accounts. So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special journals. Lesson 2. By Dave Marshall. Sales Journal. Definition and Purpose. The Sales Journal is a special journal where sales of services and merchandise made on account, businesses customer is allowed to charge purchases, are recorded. The normal entries recorded in this journal are a debit to the accounts receivable control account, a debit is also posted to the customer's accounts receivable subsidiary account, and a credit to the sales account and or sales tax payable account. The sales journal has these basic features, header with the name of the journal and page. Entry number used as a reference to a specific transaction on the journal's page. Date column to record the date of the transaction. Description column to record the customer's name or account and any other explanation or additional information about the transaction. Reference column to record our sales invoice numbers. Posting reference to provide information when a subsidiary ledger also needs to be updated. This tells us whether the subsidiary accounts receivable ledger has also been posted, updated. Debit column for accounts receivable control and credit columns for sales and sales tax payable to record the amount of the sales transaction. Our illustrated sales journal has a debit amount column for accounts receivable control and credit amount columns for sales and sales tax payable. Cash Receipts Journal. Definition and Purpose. The Cash Receipts Journal is a special journal that is used to record all receipts of cash. The normal entries recorded in this journal are a debit to the cash account and a credit to the accounts receivable control account. A credit is also posted to the customer's accounts receivable subsidiary account, sales, or other accounts, normally miscellaneous revenue accounts or loans. This journal is used to record all the cash that we receive. The biggest sources of cash for businesses result from cash sales and collections from customers who we have set up on open account, allow them credit. Our cash receipts journal has these basic features, header with the name of the journal and page. Entry number used as a reference to a specific transaction on the journal's page. Date column to record the date of the transaction. Description column to record the customer's name or account and any other explanation or additional information about the transaction. Posting reference to provide information when a subsidiary ledger also needs to be updated. This tells us whether the subsidiary account's receivable ledger has also been posted, updated. Debit column for our cash and credit columns for our account's receivable control account A, R, cash sales, and sales tax payable. Special other credits column with its related posting reference and amount columns. We use these three columns to record any other transactions resulting from receiving cash. Some examples are collection of a note receivable or borrowing money from a bank note payable. In other words, we use these columns for any transactions that don't have their own special credit column. Our illustrated cash receipts journal has credit amount columns for accounts receivable, sales, sales tax payable, and other credits and a debit amount column for cash. General ledger. Accounts receivable control account. A control account is a general ledger account that provides a summarized balance of the detailed balances of the individual records maintained in a subsidiary ledger. 
Summary entries are posted from both the sales and cash receipts journals to the accounts receivable control account. Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger The Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger's purpose is to provide detailed information about transactions that are summarized in the Accounts Receivable Control account. Both the sales and the cash receipts journals provide information needed for maintaining our Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger. Here's that special book that we use in order to keep up with how much each of our individual customers owes us. This book contains a detailed record for each of your customers. What information do you think you might want to keep up with about each of your customers? Let's make a list of some information that you would include. General information. Customer's name and or account number. Phone number. Billing address. Shipping address. Contact person. Credit limit. Credit terms. Customer financial information. Each invoice billed to the customer. Each payment received from the customer. Total balance owed by customer. Posting reference what journal the information was posted from. Normally all the information posted will come from the sales and cash receipts journals. Accounts Receivable Control and Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger Balances After posting the sales and cash receipts journals to the Accounts Receivable Control account and posting the individual items to the Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger the balance of the Accounts Receivable Control account and the sum of the detailed records in the Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger should always be the same. In other words, a control account deals with summarized information while a subsidiary ledger deals with detailed information. So you know, the special journals post to the general ledger accounts receivable control account a summarized total for the main accounts at the end of the month and post each detail entry, invoice, daily or as needed to the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. The totals will not be the same until the monthly posting is made to the general ledger accounts receivable control account. Why the different posting times? We need to update the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger on a more frequent basis such as daily or weekly so we can maintain and monitor the current balance of what our customers owe us. Payment terms. Let's first formally define what credit or payment terms are. Credit terms are an agreement and understanding between a buyer and seller as to when payment will be made and any discounts that will be allowed. The terms of payment are normally included on the supplier's invoice. Some terms even try to encourage early payment by providing cash discounts. Common terms used and how they're stated, abbreviated, payment at the time of sale. Cash or net cash. Payment at the time of delivery. COD cash on delivery. Due upon receipt. Number of days due from the invoice date. Net 30 days payment is due 30 days from the invoice date. Net 60 days payment is due 60 days from the invoice date. End of month terms and 10 EOM all purchases made in a given month are due by the 10th of the following month. Terms with discounts minus 2 tenths, net 30 to 2 percent discount allowed if paid within 10 days from the date of the invoice, otherwise full amount due within 30 days from the date of the invoice. Accounts Receivable Aging Report Since we grant payment terms to our customers, we need a way of tracking whether our customers are paying on time based on the credit terms we granted them. Our Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger provides the information we need for preparing our Accounts Receivable Aging Report. An Accounts Receivable Aging Report Report, also known simply as an AR Report or Aging AR Report, is used by many business owners who invoice their clients to keep track of what payments are due them from their customers. The main information an Accounts Receivable Aging Report shows is, what payments are owed to us, when those payments are due, and from which customer. An AR aging report will typically list customers on one side, either alphabetically or by size of debt, depending on how it's filtered, with invoice amounts in 30-day columns going across to 90 days plus. Note, when using a manual bookkeeping system, preparing an aging report becomes a tedious and time-consuming process. So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special Journals. Lesson 3. By Dave Marshall. Purchase Journal. Definition and Purpose. The Purchases Journal is a special journal that is used to record all purchases and various expenses and other charges from suppliers that a business has an open account with. Supplier allows the business to charge purchases. 
The entries recorded in this journal are a debit to expense accounts or the purchases account and a credit to the accounts payable control account. A credit is also posted to the supplier's accounts payable subsidiary account. Do you know the name of the record or ledger that works in conjunction with the purchases journal and cash disbursements journal to maintain the detailed supplier information? Accounts payable subsidiary ledger is the answer I was hoping for. It should be obvious, but I'll state it anyway. All supplier invoices are recorded, posted, in the purchase journal and the supplier's account payable subsidiary ledger. At the end of a period, month, the totals from the purchase journal are also recorded, posted, in the general ledger accounts. The purchases journal lists all invoices and documents for purchases and expenses incurred during the month. All invoices are debited to our purchase and expense accounts and credited to our accounts payable control account. The purchase journal has these basic features, header with the name of the journal and page. Entry number used as a reference to a specific transaction on the journal's page. Date column to record the date of the transaction. Description column to record the name of the payee, supplier, who written to, and any other explanation or additional information about the transaction. Invoice number reference column to record our supplier's invoice number. Posting reference to provide information when a subsidiary ledger also needs to be updated. This tells us whether the subsidiary account's payable ledger has also been posted, updated. Debit columns for all regularly occurring types of expenses or expenditures and a credit column for our account's payable control account. Special other debits column with its related posting reference column. We use these three columns to record debits for any transactions that don't have their own debit account special column. Cash Disbursements Payments Journal Definition and Purpose The Cash Payments Journal is a special journal that is used to record all cash that is paid out by a business except for payroll. Businesses with just a few employees could also use this journal to record their payroll checks. However, I recommend that you use a special payroll journal in order to have all your payroll information in one place. The entries recorded in this journal are a debit to expense accounts, the purchases account, or the accounts payable control account, a debit is also posted to the supplier's accounts payable subsidiary account, and a credit to the cash account. The cash disbursements journal lists all checks, in check number order, paid during the month. It posts total checks written as a credit entry to the cash account. All payments to suppliers that have an accounts payable subsidiary ledger account are debited to the accounts payable control account and credited to our cash account. The cash disbursements journal has these basic features, header with the name of the journal and page. Debit and credit columns to record the amount of the transaction. Check number, reference, column to record the check number of all checks issued. Date column to record the date of the transaction. Description column to record the name of the payee, supplier, who written to, and any other explanation or additional information about the transaction. Entry number used as a reference to a specific transaction on the journal's page. Posting reference to provide information when a subsidiary ledger also needs to be updated. This tells us whether the subsidiary ledger has also been posted, updated. Columns for each regularly occurring types of payment, expense, or expenditures and a column for cash. Special other debits column with its related posting reference column. We use these three columns to record debits for any transactions that don't have their own debit account special column. General ledger accounts payable control account. A control account is a general ledger account that provides a summarized balance of the detailed balances of the individual records maintained in a subsidiary ledger. Summary entries are posted from both the purchases and cash disbursements journals to the accounts payable control account. Accounts payable subsidiary ledger. The accounts payable subsidiary ledger's purpose is to provide detail information about transactions that are summarized in the accounts payable control account. Both the purchases and the cash disbursements journals provide information needed for maintaining our accounts payable subsidiary ledger. This book, the accounts payable subsidiary ledger, contains a detailed record for each of your suppliers. What information do you think you might want to keep up with about each of your suppliers? Let's make a list of some information that you would include. General information. Supplier's name and or account number. Phone number. Address. Contact person. Credit limit. Credit terms. Supplier financial information. Each invoice billed by the supplier. 
each payment check sent to the supplier. Total balance owed to supplier. Posting reference what journal the information was posted from. Normally all the information posted will come from the purchases and cash disbursements journals. Accounts payable control and accounts payable subsidiary ledger balances. After posting the purchases and cash disbursements journals to the accounts payable control account and posting the individual items to the accounts payable subsidiary ledger the balance of the accounts payable control account and the sum of the detailed records in the accounts payable subsidiary ledger should always be the same. In other words, a control account deals with summarized information while a subsidiary ledger deals with detailed information. So you know, the special journals post to the general ledger accounts payable control account a summarized total for the main accounts at the end of the month and post each detail entry, invoice, daily or as needed to the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. The totals will not be the same until the monthly posting is made to the general ledger accounts payable control account. Why the different posting times? We need to update the accounts payable subsidiary ledger on a more frequent basis such as daily or weekly so we can maintain and monitor the current balance of what we owe to our suppliers. Payment terms. Let's first formally define what credit or payment terms are. Credit terms are an agreement and understanding between a buyer and seller as to when payment will be made and any discounts that will be allowed. The terms of payment are normally included on the supplier's invoice. Some terms even try to encourage early payment by providing cash discounts. Some common terms used and how they're stated, abbreviated, payment at the time of sale. Cash or net cash. COD cash on delivery. Due upon receipt. Number of days due from the invoice date. Net 30 days payment is due 30 days from the invoice date. Net 60 days payment is due 60 days from the invoice date. End of month terms N10 EOM all purchases made in a given month are due by the 10th of the following month. Terms with discounts minus 2 tenths, net 30 to 2 percent discount allowed if paid within 10 days from the date of the invoice, otherwise full amount due within 30 days from the date of the invoice. Accounts payable aging report. Since our suppliers grant us payment terms, we need a way of tracking to determine if we are paying our suppliers when their invoices are due. Our accounts payable subsidiary ledger provides the information we need for preparing our accounts payable aging report. An accounts payable aging report report, also known simply as an AP report or aging AP report, is used by many business owners to keep track of what payments are due to their suppliers. The main information an accounts payable aging report shows is, what payments are owed, when those payments are due, and, owed to what supplier. An AP aging report will typically list suppliers on one side, either alphabetically or by size of debt, depending on how it's filtered, with invoice amounts in 30-day columns going across to 90 days plus. Sample accounts payable aging report. Note, when using a manual bookkeeping system, preparing an aging report becomes a tedious and time-consuming process. So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special Journals. Lesson 4. By Dave Marshall. Sales Returns and Allowances Journal. Definition. The Sales Return and Allowances Journal is a special journal that is used to record the returns and allowances of merchandise sold on account. The entries made in this journal are a credit to the Accounts Receivable Control Account, also a credit to the Customer's Accounts Receivable Subsidiary Ledger Account, and a debit to the Sales Returns and Allowances Account. The source document prepared to document sales returns and allowance can be a credit invoice or what is called a credit memo. Why the term credit? Because we are crediting, reducing, the balance that our customer owes us. The Sales Return and Allowances Journal has these basic features, header with the name of the journal and page. Entry number used as a reference to a specific transaction on the journal's page. Date column to record the date of the transaction. Description column to record the customer's name or account and any other explanation or additional information about the transaction. Reference column to record our sales invoice numbers. Posting reference to provide information when a subsidiary ledger also needs to be updated. This tells us whether the subsidiary account's receivable ledger has also been posted, updated. A column to debit the sales return and allowances account and also credit the account's receivable control account. 
Our Illustrated Sales Return and Allowances Journal has a column for debiting the sales returns and allowances account and crediting the account's receivable control account. Purchase Returns and Allowances Journal Definition. The Purchase Returns and Allowances Journal is a special journal that is used to record the returns and allowances of merchandise purchased on account. The entries made in this journal are a debit to the account's payable control account, also a debit to the supplier's account's payable subsidiary ledger account, and a credit to the purchase's returns and allowances account. The source document prepared by your supplier and sent to you to document your returns and allowance can be a debit invoice from your supplier or what is called a debit memo. Why the term debit? Because we are debiting, reducing, the balance that we owe to our supplier. The Purchase Returns and Allowances Journal has these basic features, header with the name of the journal and page. Entry number used as a reference to a specific transaction on the journal's page. Date column to record the date of the transaction. Description column to record the supplier's name or account and any other explanation or additional information about the transaction. Reference column to record our invoice numbers. Posting reference to provide information when a subsidiary ledger also needs to be updated. This tells us whether the subsidiary account's payable ledger has also been posted, updated. A column to debit accounts payable control account and also credit the purchase returns and allowances account. Our illustrated purchase returns and allowances journal has a column for debiting the accounts payable control account and crediting the purchases returns and allowances account. So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special journals. Lesson 5. By Dave Marshall. General Journal. The General Journal is used to record unusual or infrequent types of transactions. If a transaction doesn't fit in any of the other special journals then record it in this journal. In some beginning bookkeeping courses the General Journal has been used to record all transactions. This is used as a teaching or learning tool in order to become familiar with analyzing transactions, learning about debits and credits, and posting to the general ledger. The general journal has these basic features, header with the name of the journal and page. Entry number used as a reference to a specific transaction on the journal's page. Date column to record the date of the transaction. Description column for the account name. Posting reference to provide information that the entry has been posted to the general ledger. Debit column for the amount debited and a credit column for the amount credited. Explanation for the entry. In the real bookkeeping world, the special journals are used to group and initially record similar transactions and the general journal takes care of any other transactions that need to be recorded. Typical types of transactions recorded are adjusting and closing entries. So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special journals. Lesson 6 by Dave Marshall. Where to go from here? Worksheets and financial statements. Adjusting entries. Okay, so let's take a look and discuss what type of transactions are normally recorded in the general journal. At the end of an accounting period, month per year, the account balances are brought up to date and amounts are adjusted to reflect their current correct balance with general journal entries that are called adjusting entries. An adjusting journal entry is an entry in a company's general ledger that occurs at the end of an accounting period to correct any errors and record any unrecognized income or expenses for the period. Closing entries. Closing entries are entries made at the end of a period, usually year, to reduce the temporary account balances, revenue, expenses, and drawing accounts to zero and transfer the summarized balances to the capital account. All our income statement accounts are going to be set to zero and the net balance, which is actually the profit loss, transferred to the capital account in the balance sheet accounts. We reset our income statement account, revenues and expenses, balances to zero in order to start over and begin calculating the results for the next new period. If we didn't, the new period would have, not only the results from the new period, but also the results from the prior, older, period included. A quick refresher about our revenue, expenses, and draw accounts. 
revenue, income, expenses, and draws revenues, expenses, and draws are sub-categories of owner's equity. Think of owner's equity as a mom with three children to keep up with, I know she's only got one clinging to her leg but she left expense and draws at home. The kids are named revenue, expense, and draws and each kid has one job that they are responsible for in order to earn their allowance. Kid revenue is responsible for keeping track of increases in owner's equity and kid expense is responsible for keeping track of decreases in owner's equity resulting from business operations. Kid draws has the job of keeping up with decreases in owner's equity resulting from owner withdrawals for living expenses and other personal expenses. At the end of our period, we summarize all our kids' activities and transfer their balances to our owner's equity capital account, mom. Trial Balance Worksheet. Let's discuss the layout and what information is included in this worksheet. Heading Area. Name of the company. Title. Description of the worksheet. Period Ending Date. Columns. Name and or number of account and other descriptions. Trial Balance Column with Debit and Credit Columns. These unadjusted account balances for the debit and credit columns are taken directly from your general ledger. Totals are included in the worksheet in order to prove the accuracy of our postings. They prove that our debit balances actually do equal our credit balances. Adjusted Trial Balance Worksheet. Let's discuss the layout and what information is included in this worksheet. Heading Area. Name of the company. Title. Description of the worksheet. Period Ending Date. Columns. Name and or number of account and other descriptions. Trial Balance Column with Debit and Credit Columns. The unadjusted account balances for the debit and credit columns are taken directly from your Trial Balance Worksheet. Adjustments Column with Debit and Credit Columns. The debit and credit amounts entered in these columns are obtained from a review of your business activities to determine if any transactions have not been accounted for. Adjusted Trial Balance Column with Debit and Credit Columns. This column is calculated by taking the balance in the Trial Balance Column and adding or subtracting the debit and or credit adjustments in the Adjustments Column to arrive at the Adjusted Trial Balance Amount. After closing Trial Balance Worksheet. Let's discuss the layout and what information is included in this worksheet. Heading Area. Name of the Company. Title. Description of the Worksheet. Period ending date. Columns. Name and or number of account and other descriptions. Adjusted trial balance column with debit and credit columns. The adjusted account balance amounts for the debit and credit columns are taken directly from your adjusted trial balance worksheet. Closing entries. The debit and credit amounts entered in these columns are the amounts needed to zero out the revenue and expense accounts. After closing trial balance, this column is calculated by taking the balance in the adjusted trial balance column and adding or subtracting the debit and or credit closing entry adjustments in the closing entries column to arrive at the after closing trial balance amounts. Financial statements are summary accounting reports prepared periodically to inform the owner, creditors, and other interested parties as to the financial condition and operating results of the business. Three basic financial statements or reports are, balance sheet the financial statement which shows the amount and nature of businesses' assets, liabilities, and owner's equity as of a specific point in time. It is also known as a statement of financial position or a statement of financial condition. Income statement the financial statement that summarizes revenues and expenses for a specific period of time, usually a month or a year. This statement is also called a profit and loss statement or an operating statement. Capital statement the financial report that summarizes all the changes in owner's equity that occurred during a specific period. Order of preparation. Because some of the statements use information from other statements, the statements are prepared in the following order. 1. Income statement. 2. Capital statement. Uses information from the income statement. 3. Balance sheet. Uses information from the capital statement. Income statement. The income statement is a formal financial statement that summarizes a company's operations, revenues and expenses, for a specific period of time, usually a month or a year. The following types of accounts are used to prepare the income statement. Revenue, also called income, definition. The gross increase in owner's equity resulting from the operations and other activities of the business. Expense, also called cost, definition, decrease in owner's equity resulting from the cost of goods, fixed assets, and services and supplies consumed in the operations of a business. 
The major sections of an income statement are the heading, the revenue section, the expense section, and the final calculation of a profit or loss. The capital statement The capital statement serves as the bridge between the income statement and balance sheet. It uses the net income, loss from the income statement in addition to the owner's investments and withdrawal to determine the owner's ending capital balance shown on the balance sheet. How the balance sheet, income statement, and capital statement are related. If you compare the owner's equity, owner's claim to assets, for two-year end balance sheets, the difference, increase or decrease, is explained by the income statement and capital statement. Remember, revenues increase equity, capital contributed to the business increases equity, expenses decrease equity, and owner's draws decrease equity. The major sections of the capital statement are the heading, the beginning capital, capital contributed, net income or loss, withdrawals, the calculation of the increase or decrease to capital, and the resulting ending capital balance. The heading should contain the name of the company, the title of the statement, and the period covered by the statement. Balance sheet. A balance sheet is simply a picture of a business at a specific point in time, usually the end of the month or year. By analyzing and reviewing this financial statement the current financial health of a business can be determined. The balance sheet is derived from our accounting equation and is a formal representation of our equation assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. If you recall, this equation is also called the balance sheet equation. What makes up a balance sheet? Assets. Formal definition. The properties used in the operation or investment activities of a business. Informal definition. All the good stuff a business has anything with value. The goodies. Additional explanation. The good stuff includes tangible and intangible stuff. Tangible stuff you can physically see and touch such as vehicles, equipment and buildings. Intangible stuff is like pieces of paper, sales invoices, representing loans to your customers where they promise to pay you later for your services or product. Examples of assets that many individuals have are cars, houses, boats, furniture, TVs, and appliances. Some examples of business-type assets are cash, accounts receivable, notes receivable, inventory, land, and equipment. Assets are listed based on how quickly they can be converted into cash which is called liquidity. In other words, they're ranked. The asset most easily converted into cash is listed first followed by the next easiest and so on. Of course since cash is already cash it's the first asset listed. Liabilities. Formal definition. Claims by creditors to the property assets of a business until they are paid. Informal definition. Others claims to the business's stuff. Amounts the business owes to others. Additional explanation, usually one of a business's biggest liabilities, hopefully they are not past due, is to suppliers where they have bought goods and services and charged them. This is similar to us going out and buying a TV and charging it on our credit card. Our credit card bill is a liability. Another good personal example is a home mortgage. Very few people actually own their own home. The bank has a claim against the home which is called a mortgage. This mortgage is another example of a personal liability. Some examples of business liabilities are accounts payable, notes payable, and mortgages payable. Liabilities are listed in the order of how soon they have to be paid. In other words, the liabilities that need to be paid first are also listed first. Owner's equity, capital. Formal definition. The owner's rights to the property, assets, of the business, also called proprietorship and net worth. Informal definition, what the business owes the owner. The good stuff left for the owner assuming all liabilities, amounts owed, have been paid. Additional explanation, owner's equity represents the owner's claim to the good stuff, assets. Most people are familiar with the term equity because it is so often used with lenders wanting to loan individuals money based on their home equity. Home equity can be thought of as the amount of money an owner would receive if he, she sold their house and paid off any mortgage, loan, on the property. Owner's equity, or net worth or capital, is increased by money or property contributed and any profits earned and decreased by owner withdrawals and losses. All balance sheets contain the same categories of assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. The major sections of a balance sheet are the heading, the assets, the liabilities, and the owner's equity. The heading contains the name of the company, the title of the statement, and the date of the statement. 
In account format, the balance sheet is divided into left and right sides. The assets are listed on the left-hand side whereas both liabilities and owner's equity are listed on the right-hand side of the balance sheet. A report form balance sheet is a balance sheet that presents asset, liability, and equity accounts in a vertical format. Asset section listed first, followed by the liabilities section, and finally the owner's equity section. So, you want to learn bookkeeping. Special journals. Lesson 7. By Dave Marshall. Earlier, we were introduced to worksheets, trial balances, adjusting and closing entries, and financial statements basically what they look like and what information they contain. You may have heard the phrase closing the books. Now, we are going to put the pieces together, the records used, what they're used for, how to prepare the records, and the steps taken in order to formally close our books. So you know, in order to close the books and prepare financial statements, we need to make sure that all our transactions have been entered in our special journals. All the amounts entered in the special journals have been posted to the general ledger accounts. General ledger SUSI diary records have been posted and updated and agree with the general ledger control accounts. Any transactions requiring an adjustry entry have been identified. Use our worksheets, trial balances, to enter our general ledger account balances and adjusting and closing entries prepare our financial statements. Enter our adjusting and closing entries in the general journal and then post the amounts to the general ledger. You should realize that with a manual accounting system you cannot prepare accurate financial statements at any time you want to. You have to wait until all your bookkeeping records have been posted. Since most amounts are only posted from the special journals to the general ledger at the end of an accounting period, normally monthly, this means after the end of a period or month. If you use accounting and bookkeeping software, you can prepare financial statements and other reports with a push of a button anytime you want. Yeah, I do recommend using accounting and bookkeeping software. What is a trial balance? A worksheet listing of all the accounts appearing in the general ledger with the dollar amount of the debit or credit balance of each. Where do we get the information needed to prepare our trial balance? Hopefully, you said from our general ledger accounts. What purpose does a trial balance serve? It provides proof that the total balance of our general ledger debit accounts equal the total balance of our general ledger credit accounts. In other words, total debits and credits are equal. It does not prove that there were no errors made recording the transactions. Wrong amounts and wrong accounts could have been used in entering the transactions. Preparing an adjusted trial balance. Where do we get the information needed to prepare our adjusted trial balance? Our trial balance worksheet. We start with the information from our trial balance and then enter our adjusting entries, debits and credits, and add or subtract the amounts to arrive at our adjusted trial balance amounts. Preparing an after-closing trial balance. After you prepare your adjusted trial balance we transfer these balances to our after-closing trial balance worksheet. We then enter our closing entries and add or subtract the debit and credit amounts to arrive at our after-closing trial balance amounts. Steps in closing our books. Close drawing account to capital account. Close all revenue and expense accounts to income summary account. Close income summary account to capital account. Calculate our after-closing trial balance amounts. This column is a calculated by taking the balance in our adjusted trial balance column and adding or subtracting the debit and or credit closing entry adjustments in our closing entry column to arrive at our after-closing trial balance amount. Prepare an income statement. All the information that we need to prepare our income statement is found in the revenue and expense accounts section of our after-closing trial balance worksheet. All we need to do is transfer all the figures from our worksheet to our formal income statement. Just sum the revenues and subtract the cost of goods sold and operating expenses to arrive at the net income, loss amount. This is the amount that is transferred, closed, to the owner's capital account with a closing entry. Prepare a capital statement. All this statement does is show what caused the change in the owner's capital account for the year. All the information needed to prepare this statement is contained in the owner's capital account in our after-closing trial balance worksheet. 
Prepare a balance sheet. All the information that we need to prepare our balance sheet is found in the balance sheet area of our after closing trial balance worksheet. All we need to do is transfer all the figures from the after closing trial balance column to our formal balance sheet. It's really quite simple. After all our closing entries have been posted, the only accounts that have a balance are our balance sheet accounts assets, liabilities, and equity. Of course as you already know, the balance sheet is only made up of the asset, liability, and equity accounts. General Journal, The Finishing Touches. Hang tight, we've almost completed closing our books. Just a few more tasks. We've been using worksheets as an aid for closing our books and recording our adjusting and closing entries in these worksheets. It's time to use this information to prepare and record these entries in our formal general journal and post our general journal entries to our formal general ledger and any subsidiary ledgers. Where do we get the information for preparing the formal journal entries for our adjusting entries? Would you believe our adjusted trial balance worksheet? Where do we get the information for preparing the formal journal entries for our closing entries? Would you believe the same place our after closing trial balance worksheet? Congratulations! Believe it or not, we've come to the end of our journey. Hopefully, you learned a lot. Well at least a little.